right, all right. It's not my weekend podcast with your boy, El Gran Mariscal, the Grand Marshal himself, Mr. Jerry G. What is up, everybody? It is Monday morning, December 11th. There's a lot to get to, dog. First of all, shout outs to my niece, Daisy. Happy birthday, G. Uh, my son's birthday is tomorrow. Diego G. Turning the big one seven, dog. Jesus, I gotta update my jokes, fool. I'll be claiming uh, I'll be saying fifteen and sixteen on stage, fool. But God, it's hard to say seventeen, huh? Uh, yeah, fool. Turn seventeen. Mañana el día de la Guadalupe. I've shared the story before, and I share real quick. I'll share real quick for all y'all new listeners. Thank you, everybody who's joining in on the It's Not My Weekend podcast. Uh, I've shared a story, I believe, on American Wannabes that I think are obviously here, too. My son was born in Huntington Park, California, at Mission Hospital. That hospital is no longer around. It's been uh, demolished and turned into a small and final on Florence. And uh, right next to a church, San Matias. Big Catholic church right next to it. And um, I was there. Yes, I was. He was my firstborn. Uh, I was super excited. I got, I cut the umbilical cord. Y toda la madre, wey. Yeah. Uh, he's the only one I've cut the umbilical cord, man. I I missed the other two. I'll get to those later, fool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for obviously being my first child, uh, I was there. Um, He was born around what? Three, four, five o'clock in the morning. I remember I went home. We had been there for the night before, December eleventh, and then uh, I went back to back home. That was down the street, fool. I'm like I'm gonna go home, get some sleep, dog. Call me when you're ready, dog. And uh, sure enough, dude, I went to sleep. I went home around midnight, whatever, one o'clock. And sure enough, a couple hours later, it's happening. It's happening. Uh, I'm trying to be light about it, but actually, it got a little serious, fool. A little compita. Started to strangle himself with the umbilical cord inside the stomach, fool. So they had to go in there and get that fool, dog. So I rushed back. I got there in time, dog. And uh, it's funny because the doctor, fool, the guy who, I don't know what they call him, fool, but the guy, the vagina doctor, fool, that guy, he's like literally chiquito, way. He's not a little person, but he's damn close to it. He's like five foot two, bro. Chiquito little man, that little paisa guy, like Guatemalteco, with dope ass dude. Very mean though, very serious guy, dude. Very. He reminds me of the the doctor from six hundred, my six hundred pound life. He's kind of like that guy, but that guy is Indian. This guy's little, you know, chapin, and very similar dog demeanor, like very soft spoken, mean, like uh, he's a little Napoleon like syndrome, right? Like little, like he's so short that he has to be tough all the time. And because obviously I think people question his ass all the time. Like, how's this little man going to be able to deliver baby and shit, dog? But he makes it happen, fool. I mean, he needs a few steps and, st- and stools, but he makes it happen, dog. Uh, anyways, dog, he's there, fool. And uh, I get there. I'm running there, fool. Shout out to the homie Albert Carrizales. My, that's why he was my compadre for Diego G because he was there that night. Uh, he was excited. I mean, at the time, Albert, myself, and Eric Torres, man, they were like my BFS. We still are, fool. We still are. Son compadre los dos, way. At the time, we were like very close, fool. So he was very excited for me, dog. It was pretty dope. He was there for me. Like, he was like, yo, man, it's happening, dog. Kyle, way. And he fucking drove down from Pico Rivera to, make, to be there, fool, which is pretty cool. Her family was there, her sister, her mom, you know, everybody. It was a big deal, bro. It was all of our first child, dog. Our first child, fool. So we're all excited to get there. No, oh, que se complican las cosas, right? Things get complicated. Oh, the umbilical cord is around his neck, and we got to get him out. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean, dog? Is he breathing? Is he good? What the heck, fool? They put me in the scrubs, bro, in the jumpsuit, dog, right? The medical jumpsuit. They put me all up in there, dog. They give me the hat, the, the gloves, the booties, the all that stuff, dog. I'm, I'm all ready to go, compa. Like, I'm going to deliver this fucking baby, dog. Like, I'm going to go in there, fool. So they did the cesarean, fool, because the baby stopped complicando las cosas, way. So they had to open or cut her up, fool. So I'm there for all this, fool. So this is what, 2000 and what, four, six? Uh, 2006, dog. This is 2006, dog. So I had a phone, I had a camera phone, but it was a flip phone, bro. 
I remember taking pictures of my flip phone. I, I man, I, there's those pictures out there somewhere because I remember we emailed them to each other to save them. But there's pictures of me like, uh, how with my hand as the baby's coming out for like whatever. The, I'm like, I saw the whole thing. Is what I'm trying to tell you, bro. They cut her open. She's awake, fool, but she can't feel anything, fool. But she, her eyes are open. Obviously, I'm like rubbing her forehead and shit. I'm like, damn, this is crazy, dog. Uh, blood everywhere, fool. Like, I, I I, was fine, bro. I really was. I was fine. It, I was just more like like in awe of everything. Like, man, this is fucking crazy, fool. I was excited for the baby to come out. I wanted this motherfucking baby out already, dog. Yahweh, Yahweh. I was ex- I was looking forward to be a father and shit, dog. So I didn't get like super nervous. I was all up in there, bro. I was all up in there. Smiled. I think even cracked. I even cracked a few jokes. I think I remember making some people laugh in there, fool. Uh, I forgot what I said. Dumb shit, right? And then he comes out. They give me the scissors. I cut the little little fucking umbilical cord off. Fool. I feel like such a man, bro. And it was the dopest shit ever, dog. I, it's also 4 o'clock in the morning at this time, bro. 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And as he's being born, bro, you can hear the mariachis, bro, singing Las Mañanitas, compa. They're singing Las Mañanitas to La Virgen across the street, bro. So as he's being born, se, se escucha, estas son las mañanitas que canta el rey David. Bro, how awesome is that? That was fucking pretty awesome, fool. Like, we all, like, everyone stopped and listened. Like, we told, I told my wife, like, you hear that? You hear that? And everyone just quieted down, like, in the hospital, like, you hear that? And then she obviously she started bawling. I I think I cried full. Like I know I cried full. I was like, oh my god, this is a lot full. But you just hear us. That was pretty impactful, compa. It was pretty amazing to be honest with you. I went outside. I saw the mariachis. I went out there with Albert, and you know we're hugging and we're like congratulating me, dog. Because obviously they took her away. They took the baby away. To la madre, we just like went outside. I'm like, whoa, what the hell just fucking happened, dog? I go outside, I see the mariachis doing their thing, man. I'm just like, bro, how perfect is this night, dude? That's fucking crazy. And it was perfect until my sister-in-law's, my girl's sister's car got stolen from the hospital's parking lot at that time, at the same time. That historic car, food. she came out and said, hey, I was parked right here. I was, what, what happened to my car? And like, literally, they just took that shit. HP, dog, HP. Yeah, 17 years ago, fool. It's crazy. Damn, 17 years ago. Uh, so much to get to, dog. So much to get to. Um, been a, obviously a busy freaking weekend. We're going to get to some of your questions. But obviously got to talk about this weekend, man. I was had the pleasure and the honor to be the Grand Marshal of the Whittier Christmas Parade. Parade. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, 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 ay. The Whittier Christmas Parade, dog. And it was truly an honorful, happy, very cool. Uh, rode in this dope-ass Rolls Royce, man. Um, took care of me, dog. VIP status, bro. Tons of people out there driving down Uptown Whittier Boulevard. What is that? Greenleaf, Philadelphia. Going down that street, man. Uh, it was amazing to see a bunch of people saying what's up. Waving my waving at each other, dog. Beautiful, beautiful. I saw a bunch of heads out there. Thank you, everyone who came up and appreciated it, dog. Gave some love back. It was a beautiful situation, dog. Beautiful, man. I had my girl, I had my son, dog. My two older boys, uh, they were like whatever about it. They had a basketball game, I think, that Saturday morning too. So they were they were cool. But uh we I met up with them later and we did the HP parade, dog. Got in the HP parade together. Um, which I did later that night. Also very cool, dog. Even though the HP, I was kind of at it like last minute. Uh, apparently, there were some like misunderstanding, miscommunication, miss this, miss that. The point is that they forgot to hit hit me up, fool. They said they had me in mind the whole time. And I'm like, I don't know, dog. I think once I started posting that I was going to be the pinche Grand Marshal Whittier, that's when they pusieron las pilas, way, and they hit me up again. Nah, but nah, for the 
they hit me up. They're like, hey, man, that same week, yo, man, we want you to be a part of it. And I appreciate it. And I think uh, it was really cool. They gave me a plaque, bro. Got to meet Manny Mota. Got to meet uh, the little lady from Blue Beetle. Fabian Alomar, El Cholo de los Tolos, El Rey de los Cholos was there, fool. Uh, had a blast, fool. Got to ride in this Doom buggy. Fun, bro. Shout out to El Levantón Mariscos, uh, taking care of me, bro. I went to go eat there Sunday the next day. And man, let me tell you, man, I had never been there. I've always driven by there. It's on California and like Broadway or something. California to Hope and HP, I think. I went there, first time I had never been there, dog. I've always driven by it. And let me tell you, that fucking fool, no es por nada, wey. No es por nada, but that shit was fire, compa. Great, great food, dog. Got to check it out if you're in the HP area. El Levantón, bro. Mariscos. They got some bombers, la micheladas with the shrimp in it. They got empanadas that were fucking amazing, dog. It's great food, dog. You have to... Check it out, fool. We just got to check it out, bro. It's not even a commercial, fool. It's the real shit. Um, so anyways, I had a blast. Whittier, HP, dog. Just a bunch of people out there, fool. Mad love, dog. Shaking a bunch of hands, fool. Spend, it, spending it with my family, with my kids, dog. It's, it's a blessing, bro. It's a pinche blessing, way. Gracias, fool. I feel very honored, bro. Uh, to be honest with you, like, you know... Uh yeah, I, I I'm a I'm a I'm a hometown little hero, well, not hero, hometown celebrity. Yeah, I get that, but I also see there's a bunch of other famous people out there, dog. So I'm not I'm trying to say like compare myself to be out there for, but I it feels special because Whittier. I don't know who how many people turned down their invite, dog, and they finally got to me, dog. But I I really appreciate them just for reaching out at all. For they they were really excited to have me. Took a bunch of pictures, met a bunch of people out there, dog, and uh, I felt I felt really really welcome, dog. So I really de definitely thank you guys, thank everybody out there, and of course HP always showing the mad love, bro. HP, my hometown, bro. Like I love it there, fool, and uh, I'm glad to be a part of it. The, the parade, tawa chingon way, they they go hard in HP, fool, in the parade, dog. Paisa shit, and I was really really proud to be a part of that for sure. All right, uh. Take those invites for granted. I just, I don't, man. So I really appreciate every little thing that, uh, every invite, every people just reaching out, uh, all the beautiful comments, the messages. Uh, this is all uh, from you guys, man. It's been, a, it's been a beautiful, beautiful year. I was kind of like reflecting on 2023. Ay, 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 reflecting, dog. Um, and a lot of beautiful things happened this year, bro. I can't, man. I mean, uh, another step forward in this hard grind Difficult career, dog. It really is. But a lot of beautiful things happen, bro, obviously, right? We could probably, I'll probably do like a little recap of 2023 in the next episodes before we end the year. That'll be a good idea, right? That'll be a good idea. But before that, let's get to the questions, dog. Let's get to the questions. Bunch of questions coming in. So I know we, let's get, that should be fun, dog. And before we get to the questions, dog, I mean, somebody hit me up, bro. I'm not going to put her on blast, dog. Cool. New listener, actually. She's all like, hey, how does your girlfriend feel about all the shit you talk about on this stuff? First of all, it's all entertainment, dog. And my, second of all, my chick don't listen, fool. She cause all, she, she's like, I stopped listening a long time ago. I just, I don't want to know. I'm going to get mad regardless. Whether it's good, bad, or ugly, I'm going to get mad. So I don't even want to listen. So, But she, her friends do listen, so I do be careful. And she gets me, dog. My girl, she, we're on and off, bro. We've had our issues like any other couple, bro. We're we're no different from any of you guys' couples, bro. We we argue, we fight, we 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 ignore each other for a few days. We take I we take breaks, bro. Like we've gone like months, like bro, like we need to step back. But at the end of the day, like she gets me, bro. She respects what I do. She encourages me. She gets it. Fool. She 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 met me in this form, bro. Like I was at a show. That's how we met, fool. Uh, so it's hard to like f be upset at something like that when she's like, "This is how we met, bro." But I think that we we I think that we respect each other. She knows that I, I, I'm all talk, compa. A lot of it is all talk. It's all for entertainment. That's uh, that part of course. And I have I do have a past. I am 43 years old. I have a lot of experiences. I've seen a lot. I've done a lot, which I love to share. And I think that's what makes this podcast fun and special. Is reflecting, recollecting on all the old shit that I used to do. And sometimes I still run into the situations today, right? So I like to, you know, share those moments. 
She gets that, dog. She gets that. But at the end of the day, fool, this is all. I'm all talk, fool. No, no, you're not going to that way. You know, no school, no me telephone, no way. I'm never acting, acting all sus in front of her, dog. I answer my phone. I answer every text message in front of her, dog. I got nothing to hide, fool. So, yo, guilt-free, compa. That's why I'm able to express myself here. Porque it is what it is. It's who I am. And she knows that. I, I, a lot of these stories I tell, I share with her these stories. I've shared these stories. Like, man, there's one time. I mean, I don't get too in the detail and shit like that, but... She understands how crazy this business can be as well, right? So, um, yeah, fool, but si sabita, si sabita a veces. Pero I'm like, come on, you can't censor me, fool. Like, you can't filter me out, fool. Like, you can't cancel me like you. Like, that's dumb. Like, either you're with me or without. Now, I will be more mindful about your feelings, claro. Way. That's why I hold myself back. I start doing that stuff, and then I hold myself back sometimes. But because of that, she's palgo, way. But all these stories obviously are before her, dog. So it's like all these old shit of me, dog. We're talking about when I was in my 20s and my early 30s and shit like that. So come on. Come on, dog. Come on. Come on. Anyways. Uh, yeah, we've been like broken up for as long as like two years. We did like two years not being together, dog. There's this co-parenting for like two years. And, and it's something that was like brings us back just because, again, I, I'm not trying to be all... In the streets like that no more, dog. I'm trying to settle down too, dog. I'm trying to be chill more, fool. Like, está cabrón, wey. Está cabrón. It's, it's, it's grimy out there, dog. It's grimy, fool. You know what I'm saying, fool. It's, it's also fun. All right. It's moving on. Does that answer your question, though? That was the first question. All right. Let me see here. Uh, let's run into some of these questions, dog. All right. Here we go. Let's do it. Let's let's find one right there. I got you now, wey. I got you now. Questions. I've been saving them, fool. Here we go. Congrats on getting called up to open for Fluffy. I've always had a question to ask about the comedy world, but didn't know who to ask until a comedian I followed came along. From your point of view, what is it like to be an opener for a big-time comedian that performs in arenas? It looks like being an opener for a big name can be made into a career all by itself. Does your act have to be different for an arena? Do you have to work clean? Good questions. Good questions. Uh, pretty good question. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, yes and no, fool. Like, obviously, um, what is it like to be an opener for a big-time comedian that performs? It's funny because when I first started doing comedy... And maybe because I was, like, uh, nervous about what I was getting myself into or didn't want to get myself too excited. But I remember when I first started doing comedy, those were my goal. My goal was, look, man, I don't want to be famous. I don't need to be George Lopez. I don't need to be Gabriel Iglesias. But my bar, my goal was to op- just be an opener. Just be an opener for big names. That was my goal. I just want to do 15, 20 minutes up front, get the laughs, get some love, and go home. That's what I, I remember those were the goals that I had set myself. Like, I, I'm already 30 years old, bro. Like, I, it's going to be hard enough for me to be famous, right? Social media was different at that time, right? So my thought was like, man, if I, if I could just open for our George Lopez, just tour with him, see the country, see the world with George Lopez, do my 15 minutes and get the fuck off. That was my goal, bro. But then you start, then you actually start opening for these big names. And you're like, whoa, whoa, I want that. I want that. I want what he has. I want, I want my name on the marquee. Right? So, like, I want that big fat check. I remember I started seeing a fat check from one of his, uh, I think it was Jeff Garcia. I opened up for Jeff Garcia. And they gave me his check by accident, both being Garcia's. And we're in the ice house in Pasadena. And I, they give me the check, like, here's your check. I'm like, oh, thanks, bro. I open that shit. And we're talking about this, like, 2011, 12? I see that check, and it was like, whoa, what the? $20,000? What the heck? What the heck? For, like, two, for Friday and Saturday, dog. I was like, whoa. They give me my check. Guys, literally, they give me my check as the opener because they made a mistake. I'm like, whoa, I don't think this is my check. But I saw the amount. He said, like, I'm like, no mames, way. Oh, I'm sorry about that, bro. Sorry about that. Here's your check. Same, 
Those four shows, two Friday, two Saturday. He got an average of five thousand a show. And they get then they give him my check. You know how much I got? You know how much I got, guys? I got seventy five dollars a show. So my check was for three hundred dollars, bro. Versus twenty thousand dollars, bro. And that's when I'm like, que la madre, wey. I what? He went up there and did an hour. People came to see him. His name is on the marquee. He sold the tickets. His following. I get it. I get it. But I'm also on that same fucking show. And I did 15 minutes of fire, compa. Fucking straight fire. Killing it, compa. At least I thought, right? So I, I knew something like, whoa, something. Jeez. Guys, it's really that. Like when you're in the beginning, bro, like my first five years, I, I took losses. Literal low, literal losses. That's why you still keep your day job. That's why you keep stay put your head down and keep working. If you really want this fool, you're gonna take losses, compa. You're gonna spend money on gas, on drinks, on food, on parking, on fuck everything just to get to a twenty five to fifty dollar spot. You're gonna take losses, fool. You're not gonna make money. So at that point, my job was like, my I was like, as long as I just get to open food, and I'm good, dog. I started seeing those checks, and I'm like, no, 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 something's, ha, 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 hey, 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 compa. So, gracias a Dios, now I make my money off of this, and I, gracias a Dios, I make pretty good fucking money. For not great, I'm not rich, fool. I've always said I'm not rich, guys. I make as much just in comedy, just in comedy. I make as much. As a full time job with overtime with benefits, I make whatever you guys make top pay at your office company job eighty to hundred thousand dollars for. I make and just comedy for. So right now, I want to make more. Obviously, I want to get over a hundred grand a year, fast. But I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. I'm blessed. Fool, anyone? You come on. For what I'm making, I'm just doing. Comedy is fucking pretty awesome for me. Um, so yeah, so it's definitely different for. Uh, let me see here. Uh, let me see here. Well, from the point of view, what is like to? It looks like being an opener for a big name can be made into a career all by itself. Yeah, like I said, yes, it can. You can, you can, but you become. You're you're also obsolete, bro. Like you're you're not. You're pretty invisible. Uh, if you're opening for somebody big, huge name, huge name, unless you really stand out, um, which I, I I tend to do. All right, again, I'm not trying to like toot my own horn here, fool. But every time I've opened up for like the Jeff Garcias, the Steve Trevino's, the Pa Rodriguez, obviously lately, uh, Mr. Fluffy, that's how the old way. For some reason, I I do stand out. You got to be memorable, right? And the way to be memorable is obviously by, first of all, your material, the way you look, the way you act. You got to be memorable, fool. All right? They got to be that guy, oh, that guy with the glasses, the guy, that guy with the comb over, the guy that talks about his kids, the, you know, the single dad dude or the, the kid who hates his kids. Like, you got to be memorable. You got to go home. Think about you. Think about you driving home after a comedy show. It te pones a pensar... The those comediantes que viste, all the comics you saw, and you're like, oh yeah, that guy was funny. Oh, the guy with the glasses. Oh, the fat guy was funny. Oh, the bald dude was funny. Oh, the black guy. When he said that, you start to become memorable. And then if you really, really like that comic, you're going to remember that guy's name. At least you're going to go after, like, who the fuck was this guy? Right? Who was that black guy? What was his name? And then you, that's because you really like that motherfucker. That guy really connected with you. I get that a lot. I get that a lot opening for these cats. And I was with Chingo Bling, same thing. You know, I get I, I get the, I can't see Chingo Bling, but who the fuck are you, bro? Dude, you were fucking hilarious, fool. I got I to gotta follow you right now. I got to look you up right now. I, that's, that's cool, right? That's awesome. But you can also make a, a name, a, a, a good living, just opening for big names, and ne- no one ever knows who your name, what your name is, bro. 
No one ever knows what your name is. So it, it, it's, it could be both. It depends on who, what you're about and who you are. For me, when I open up for these shows and I get these opportunities, I do hope and my plan is, my intent is to stand out and to be memorable and for people to remember. But not to be too thirsty. I'm not going to be this guy that comes up and be like, follow me on social media, I'm comedian Jerry G. Now you're being thirsty and extra, bro. I'm not that guy. I rely on my material and my jokes, my personality, me, your way, for people who want to follow me. Like, Want. I have 35,000 followers, bro, which is, I, I wish I had 100. I feel I, feel I deserve 100,000 followers. I really do. I don't have them. But the 35,000 that I do have, bro, are real fucking followers, dog. Like real people, no spam, no robots, no like, please follow me. Like, I beg you. Like, no, these are real fucking followers. And that's why I, I'm very appreciative of these 35,000 followers. Do I want 100,000? Motherfuck, yes, I do. I do. That just tells me I have to work harder to get to that goal. All right? So, it's it's una chulada way, all right? Uh and then to just to finish off that thought on that question, uh does your act have to be different for an arena? Do you have to work clean? Yeah, of course. So when when I open up for Fluffy, you only get 10 minutes, right? You're, again, they're not there to see you, fool. You're not going to get more than 10 minutes. You're going to get not even 15 or 20, bro. That's too long, okay? Unless it's only like a two-man show, like it's only one opener before the main act, then yeah, that person's going to get 20, 25 minutes because it's only one opener. But when there's like three openers, then either he's going to get 10 minutes, fool. So it's usually about 30 minutes of openers. Whether it's one, two, or three, total span is going to be about 30 minutes before the main attractive, attraction, okay? So, since obviously it's three of us, we're going to get 10 minutes. Um, and then, yeah, at that point, I'm going to do 10 minutes. Of course, I'm going to shoot my best shot and do my best material, right? Do the best jokes I've got in my arsenal that will transcend and everyone will laugh. So, yes, of course. Keeping it clean is also pretty important. The bigger the show, the cleaner you are, the better. The better. Unless you're, again, unless you're the big-ass name, the marquee guy who everyone came to see, then you can say whatever the fuck you want, compa. You can say whatever the heck you want. That's your show. is your spotlight. is your arena. But us openers, it's not. It's not our show. It's not our stage. It's not our We're guests. So, like, any guest that comes into any home, you're going to respect that fucking house, right? And that's how you approach it. As a, you know, like, I'm, I'm here for a good time. and a sh I'm just here for a short time and a good time. I'm going to give them some jokes, limit the efforts, limit the bad words, and hopefully be memorable as possible, get some new followers, make some new fans, and get the hell out of here, fool, like, as, as far as that. So, claro que sí, güey. Claro que sí. Good question. All right. Uh, let me see if I can get to another one. Let me see here. Uh, here's one. Oh, this chick left her. She left her uh, her name. So, Jessica from Bell. Oh, for sure, Bell. I'm a single mom of a seven-year-old boy, and I'm finally able to afford a car and not some hand-me-down from my family. How old are you, Jessica? I hope you're like 21 with a seven-year-old. Oh, for sure. Do you have any advice on buying a car? Should I buy a new car or a used car? I would really appreciate your advice. Thank you, Jerry. Love the podcast and your comedy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's actually an interesting question. Guys, I've bought many cars. I've been to many dealers. I've purchased a lot of fucking cars, new and used, and I always get fucked over. I always get fucked over. I am the worst at dealers, bro. Me la, me la, me la meten bien bonito at dealership, bro. I bought, man, I want to say at least 10 cars off the lot. Half new, half used. And 
I, I guess I don't I don't have the patience and I don't like to fight. I'm not very confrontational. I don't like this back and forth, bro. To be honest with you, me ven la cara de pendejo casi siempre, güey. Very few times I've won. Maybe two times of that. And it sucks because a lot of these times I've gone to these dealerships with the hookup, with the plug, with the... My boy got you. My homie got you. My my cousin got you. My best friend. My own brother-in-law works at a dealership. My own fucking brother-in-law, sister to my 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 married. Sister to my si- married to my sister. He's a salesman in Cerritos at GMC. All right? And he's been there for like 5 years. Good salesman. I trust him. He has my best intention. He really does. He has my best intention. But once I get past him, it's when these fucking wolves, these fucking assholes, they're the ones, dog. And I can tell because he gets frustrated for me. I've gone with him. I got my Accord from him, my Honda Accord. And I think I bought another. Oh, yeah, I got a Kia Optima from him. He used to work at a Kia dealership before GMC. He was at Kia. And so I bought my Kia Optima, the one I got a DUI on. I crashed, I, I, you know, whatever. So I lost that Kia. But anyways, according to him, he got me the best deal he could get me, right? And I believe him. I believe him. But I also feel like I could have got better, right? Like, I don't know. Like, if I would have put my foot down a little bit more, pushed back a little bit more, I feel I got to got better. I feel like he does his best. I could see him, like, get frustrated with his coworkers, with his bosses, with his supervisors, with his loan officers. I could see him go at it with them, fool. And he's like, hey, compa, es mi, es mi, es mi cuñado, wey. This and that, blah, blah, blah. No mames, wey. Le puedes, ayúdale, bájale más, wey. No, blah, 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 this and that. And they're like, yeah, you can tell they go at it. No, Javi, that's it. This is all we can do, fool. This is all. This, yeah, wey. Ya no se chingando, wey. This is the best we can do, fool. I'm not going to go any lower. Like, fool, like, a thousand dollars less, bro. You can't do a thousand dollars less, bro. You can't do... 25 bucks less a month, fool. You can't do uh, 20 bucks less a month. No, that's it. That's it. It gets to this back and forth where I'm like, fine. Just fucking get me out of here, dude. Okay, you win. Fuck. And it's frustrating as fuck. I hate dealerships, bro. I fucking hate them. With all, that, with all that said, my advice to you is, dude, your credit talks at the end of the day. It's your credit. Your credit talks. Um... That's what speaks for you, fool. The higher the credit, the better. I've been under. I've. I'm. I hate. And again, yo no sé na, Yo no sé muchas cosas. I should ask. It's because my my burnout doesn't give me the insights like I wish he would, fool. Like I wish he would. He doesn't. I, he gives me some of it, but not all of it. But I feel. I always felt that el enganche way, the down payment, is bullshit, bro. I always felt that's bullshit. I don't. I don't ever thought. At a dealership, I don't know about homes. I don't know about other stuff. But as far as the dealership, I feel like you give five thousand down, like those five thousand down, bro. I feel like it just goes washed, fool. Like, like they keep. I feel like they pocket that fucking money, bro. Like I don't think it really affects your car note, your car payment, your car. Let's say car's thirty thousand dollars, right? And you give them five thousand. That was 25 supposedly, right? But then they add these taxes and fees. It goes back to $30,000. And I'm like, well, what happened to the fucking 5000 I just gave you? Like, oh, yeah, it, it, it lowered your payment to, like, less. now it's $20 less a month. Like, $5,000 just got me 20 bucks less a month? Like, that's fucking bullshit. A lot of these things are so frustrating. Like, but again, again. I've always had bad credit until lately. Now, right now, I'm fixing my credit to buy a house. It's last 2023. I started around 2022 uh, seriously fixing my credit, like paying off all my fucking credit cards, watching my money more closely, investing. Like now that I'm making a little bit more money in comedy, things are going well. I've been using that money to fix my credit, dog. So right now, tengo, I'm at 700 for minimum, at least. I'm at 700. But for a long time, but for a long time, I've been in the low 500s, guys. Low 500s. I've had to repo cars. I've had. I've forgot about credit cards that I had that I never paid. Uh, like I've 
I fucked my shit up really bad, really bad. When I was young in my 20s, fool, I had like five credit cards. I maxed them all out on bullshit, on partying, on my mother's way, like hard fool. I remember I used to open up a credit card like in August, like a $3,000 or $5,000 credit card, and I would spend it all. By December, it was gone, fool. By December, that shit was maxed out, compa. Vegas trips, gambling Club nights, bars, full tabs, full date night. All full. I used to go hard, and I fucked me up. I got to a point where I'm like, I can't. I dude, I had like so many credit cards, fool. I fuck my shit up, bro. Fuck my shit up. So por eso también, I've always had bad experiences at dealerships because they throw that shit in your face, dog. They throw that shit in your face all day. It was this, what is that? Curacao bill, this bill, Visa, MasterCard, this, that. I'm like, oh fuck. Sorry, man. The best we could do, doc. The best we could do, is, unless you give us ten thousand dollars cash right now, doc. The best we could do is six hundred a month. I'm like, for a Civic, doc. What the fuck? Six hundred a month for a Civic. And then I do the simple math. $6,000. I'm, I'm, like I'm exaggerating. But like 400 bucks for a Civic, right? 400 bucks a month times 72 payments, like, right here, real quick. And I, and I do the simple math in front of them, in front of the motherfucking loan officer. I'm like, all right, so you're telling me that I'm going to pay 400 bucks a month times 72 months for a Civic, all right? You're telling me that I'm going to give you $28,000 for a Fucking use Civic, fool. Get the fuck out of here, bro. For a $10,000 car, fool, I'm going to give you $28,000? That's way, man. No mames, way. And then, but you look at your credit, dog. You're at 520, dog. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Man, fool. Come on. I hate it, fool. I hate it. Oh, man. Se me está la presión, wey. Uh, I hate dealerships, bro. I hate, and a lot of times, again, they're homies. I'm going in there with the hookup. When I go to a dealership, it's because I supposedly, apparently, I know somebody there. I'm talking to you, también pinche Fernie Rodriguez. His brother works at a, at a, a, again, they have the best intentions, fool. I know they're not trying to fuck me. I know. I know they're not trying to fuck me, fool. But there's only so much they can do, right? There's only so much they can do. And I always feel like, you can do more, compa. You can do more. And that goes for that goes to my for my brother in law. That goes to all the homies everywhere. Every dealership I've gone is like, I got you, compa. I got you. You ain't gonna get a better deal. But I always leave that lot like, man, I just got fucked over, dog. I just got fucked over. Um, every time, <laughs> every time. What was your question, anyways? By the way, what was your question? I mean, uh, should I buy a new car? Oh, I. I would always buy new, dog. The goal is to buy new. There's not much of a difference between a used and new car when it, uh, as far as payments are concerned, right? You're still getting finance. It's still going to be a monthly fucking payment, bro. Let's say if it's used, it's going to be 300 If it's new, it's going to be 400 I'd rather pay the extra 100 bucks for new, whatever that you know, car is, whatever. I My goal is to go new. I bought used... Sometimes because it's the better quality car. Like, I got this Honda Accord 2018. I got it used. I got it in 2020 during the pandemic. So, it was only two years old. Very low mileage. I'm like, I'm getting a good deal. Like, the car was only like 25000 No, less. It was like 22000 So, I was like, yeah, fool. Versus a brand new Honda Accord, which is going to be 35000 So, I'm like... I can't afford a 35000 brand new zero miles Honda Accord. But I can afford this one that's only two years old. For like twenty two thousand, and I'm almost finished paying it off. I've been paying like a motherfucker on that bitch. Um. Uh, anyways, that and then they give it with the old, uh, the same like every real estate guy does the same shit too. They always do that. Look, man, the, every car dealer does this shit. Oh, fucking hate it when they do this shit, dog. When they tell you this, just because you're getting a bad deal. They, it's like I feel like they know you're getting a bad deal. Like they, and that's the other thing, bro. And that's what sucks, fool. Like, these motherfuckers, they know they're fucking you over. That's the one that hurts, bro. So anyways, I feel like a little guilt starts setting in on these motherfuckers. Uh, from the, from the, la cogida que te dieron, wey. Now now they're all like, hey, but listen, man. You can come back, like, in six months and refinance your car. I'm like, 
what does that mean, dog? You come back in six months and you show your contract to a bank, to your Bank of America or to Chase or wherever, and they'll and they'll refinance your car and get you a better payment. They'll drop your payment, this and that. I'm like, why can't we just do all that right now? What the, what's going on? What? And then the point is that they want me to go through all these hoops, all this bullshit, run my credit again in six months, make another down payment possibly just to drop my monthly payment, dog. Just so they get theirs, fool. Because once, once they get refinanced and a new bank takes over that loan, oh, they got their money, bro. So I owe this be anyway. But they don't realize how it's not easy to get refinanced, bro. It's not easy. It's not just like an open-and-door situation, bro. So they want me to go through all this trouble six months from now because I'm unhappy with my deal that they are giving me, that they know they fucked me on. It's all bad, bro. It's all bad, bro. And, boo, fight me. Fight me. I, I want motherfuckers, I want dealers to hit me up right now, bro. With all that said, I plan to go to a dealership next year. Yeah, 2024, I'm buying a new car. Um, I only owe like 8000 or something on my Accord. I've been, I, I stand like, dude, the, the car note's only like 370 or something. I'll be sending like 600 700 a month, fool. So I bet, let's touch on the ganos, Um... Trying to get that shit paid off. I uh, I also got to buy my son a cart next year. Uh, it's gonna be a bitch, folks. But the point is, I'll be coming. I'll be coming to your fucking dealership. So let, let, uh, uh, hit me up. Let me see who can hook me up. And I know I'm gonna get messages, bro. My brother's gonna got my brother got you, dog. Oh my, hey, compa, mi primo, way. He's basically the owner of Longo Toyota, fool. Just he'll get you whatever you want. Oh, wait, I get there. Yeah, I know, I know. We can't. We there's only you can't do that. Oh, we can't give you that. Oh, we can't have. Oh, we can't help you with that. Oh, fool. And then I, the other one, the other one was always like, like one of the tricks was like, stand your ground, stand your ground. This is how much I can pay, and that's it. This is how much I'm gonna pay. This is how I'm gonna give you. Stand your ground. That's right. That's one of the tips to give you. Be ready to walk away. They'll, they'll stop you when you're ready to walk away. They'll stop you, fool. Bro, I walked away. Like three, four times, and they don't stop me, fool. They let me walk out of that place. I, I, I bust up. I bust up like, okay, I, I can only pay three fifty a month, fool. It's not like I can do. I can only do three fifty a month, bro. I, I know. I'm sorry. Oh, we, we know. Well, we got you a four twenty five, compa. I'm sorry, dude. Four twenty five is the less we can go. Me hoping that we meet in the middle way, three seventy five. You know. Ah, oh, through fifty, fool. I'm sorry, fool. That's the most. Man, maybe three sixty, dog. Maybe I could do three sixty, dog. Three sixty, and they and they just stick to no four twenty five, compa. That's all we can do. Four twenty five, bro. So, man, oh well. Uh, well, I guess uh, we can't come to an agreement. Then I'm just gonna have to like walk away. I I guess I'm just gonna have to leave. And they're like, okay, sure. Uh, here's your keys. Here's your here's your ID. Okay. Uh. So you can't do better than 425? No, we can't. 425 is the best we can do, man. 420? Can you do 420 a month? No, we can't. No. <sighs> you gotta let me walk away right now. Instead of giving me letting me go for 420 fool, you gonna let me walk out a lot. Yeah, I think so. I think we're gonna let you have to walk. All right. Oh well. And I'm like this bluff, or I feel like we're both bluffing, right? Or, yeah, nah. 422, bro? Can you do 422? No, man, 425. <sighs> yeah, dude, look, bro. I, I'm, I'm going to walk out right here, fool. 420, bro. 420, I'm walking out, bro. 420. Yo, yo, okay. At first, I was at 350, wait. So, yo, 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 I'm up I'm up there with him, fool. 420. 420, way. All right, I'm out of here, fool. I'm out of here. Yeah, give my shit. I'm out of here, fool. All right, I'm leaving, guys. I'm 420. Uh, sorry, have a good day, sir. Have a good one. All right, good luck to you. Hey, my little man. It, that's happened to me like three times when the the rules have been stick to your guns they will gi they'll give you the, the, they'd rather give you take those five dollars and have a loss at the sale they, they, I'm telling you it's happened like three times I go in there ah, wait. 
I can't do that much. I can do this much. And that's all I can do. I can do this much. No, yeah, they're bringing the other guy and they bring the big boss and the other boss and the other boss. And they're like, oh, Jerry, no, listen, listen, man. Listen, listen, with your credit, doc, this is all we can do. With your credit, this is as best as we can do. This is the best deal you're going to find anywhere. But yeah, I go, but it's 427 a month, fool. I'm not going to pay no 427 a month, doc. I could do 360, fool. 380 even, bro. But anything under 400, give me 399, compa. Anything under 400, I can do it. Nothing. I can't do for over 400. I can't. I can't. Oh, but no se puede, wey. 427, dude. This this car right here, fool, is at least 450 a month. We're already giving it to you at 427, dog. I'm like, no, wait. Anything under 400, fool, then we're talking, bro. Si no camino, wey. I'll walk right now, bro. I'll walk. And then they're like, all right, well, get the fuck out of here, fool. Like, well, bye. Goodbye. I'm like, wait, you're going to let me walk, fool? You're going to let me go? That's fucked up, eh? Every time. So I have never been the best negotiator. I don't, I'm not a good arguer. I'm not a good fight. I, I don't like to fight. I don't like that. I don't, me gusta. I don't like it. I don't. I like to vent. I like to argue. I like to be like, it, it's like in a funny way for me. I like to let it out. I don't hold it in. I like to like let it out and vent and cry and complain. I enjoy that. I enjoy that. But I don't like to be confrontational because nothing is that serious to me, bro. Nothing. Nothing to me is that serious. Not that way. All right? So I'm not down to, like, f- f- fight, stab, kick. I'm not. I'm not down with that shit, dog. It's, I've never, it's never been my personality, dog. Nothing is worth throwing down, like, fighting fool, someone losing their life, someone getting seriously injured. Nothing has been worth it to me like that. Nothing. Of course, now you're talking about going somewhere to a place like hurting your family and stuff. That's different. Of course, that's different. We're talking about an argument, a stupid argument about sports, about music, about cars, about what is not, not. None of that is worth it to me, dog. None, none of that. You know, that's why. Like that's why girls. I've always been a good like with girls, dog, because I don't. Yes, I'll complain. Yes, I'll fight with you. Yes, we'll argue. Yes. But at the end of the day, I'm going to fall back and I'm going to let you win. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah. Because nothing is that serious to me. All right. All right. Uh, do we have time for one more? Eh, I think we got time for one more. I actually got to go. I got a lot of shit to do today. Uh, let me see here. Uh, let me see. A ver, a ver, a ver. Uh, here we go. One more, one more. What up, homie? My name is Javi from South Central. I'm a huge Dodger fan, just like you, and I feel like the pain every year, carnal. I was just wondering, what would you, what would your walk up song be if you were a professional ball player? Much love, homie, and keep the laughs coming. Shout out to the uh, Susias out in Figueroa. Oh shit! Oh snap, bro. I miss you, girls too. Anyways, um, that's a good one right here. Uh, I don't know. I've I've actually thought about that before. Um, and uh, the, here's the thing: a lot of these shows, comedy shows, they always ask. Most of the time, they'll ask, "What what do you want your walk up song to be?" I've always been the guy who says, "I don't care. Play whatever you want. Anything hype, anything fun, English or Spanish. Me vale madre." That's the last thing I want to worry about for me as a as a comic, the last thing I need to worry about these guys, a lot of these guys, and I don't, I don't judge for you. Be you, you are who you are. But a lot of comics are like, oh, I need this song at this time. Play it from this time, from this second on, from this minute, from that. I'm like, bro, that's a lot of energy for a guy who's gonna do five minutes on stage right now, dog. Like, re- dude, that you're an opener, fool. Relax, all right. Like, same thing with me, fool. I've always been like, I don't care. Because I've been I've been an opener for so long that I get it. Like, it's not me. Like, I don't give a shit. But some comics do care. It sets the tone y que la madre. I'm like, bro, your jokes, your material is what sets the tone. So I've always been that guy. Like, I don't give a shit. Play whatever you want. Um, Every once in a while, like, I tell, ah, play a Paisa song. Uh, Te quiero mucho, TQM. 
uh, maybe some peso pluma, whatever. That's always a little fun for people. Some sonora dinamita is fun, you know, a scandalo, something fun, whatever. Like, that's fine. Like, I don't, that's fine. That's, that's cool. Uh, maybe some Snoop Dogg, some 90s shit, right? Some Dog Pound shit, you know, some Tupac. I get it. That's cool. It's fun. Yeah, sure. That's dope. But I'm not going to go out of my way to request a song. Um, as far as the baseball one, shit, dog. For baseball, uh, same, I feel the same, bro. Like, I feel the same. It would be anything. If I was really a baseball player for real, Dodgers, Dodgers for sure, for sure, I would... Uh, I would go up to a, like a Tire song for just to be a dig. Mi buena suerte, probably. Mi buena suerte. But they, now they only play like five seconds of the song for like, ah, get the fuck out of here. Speaking of the Dodgers, and how can I forget? How can I forget? And we're going to end this with it. Show me the money. Shotani has landed down the street, bro. I used to say, when I usually, when I'm like performing nearby, I'm always saying, all the way from Huntington Park, all the way from down the street, all the way from down the street, Shohei Otani has landed in Dodger Blue. And man, let me tell you, bro, I, I, of course, I'm super hyped, dog. I was going to drop a little video reel about it, but I've had no time this weekend. Uh, maybe I'll get to it this week, hopefully. But it's funny here. Look, man, and I might get a little canceled for this. I, I know it's like, not it's not a it's not a little outdated joke, bro. But listen, when Otani was gonna be signed with the Toronto Blue Jays on Friday, which we all thought the news was out that he was signing with Toronto, I was like, man, fuck that Chinito, bro, fuck that fool, dog. He's whack anyway, dog. Seven hundred million for a feature designated hitter. He's not gonna piss this year, dog. Man, fuck that guy, dog. I was that guy. I was that guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Low key fool. I was serious, bro. I was like, listen. I didn't know it was going to be 700. At the time, we thought it was going to be like five or six. So I was like, 500 million for a guy who's only going to designate hit this year, bro? He's like, he can't even play defense, fool. He's not going to pitch. And then when he comes back to pitching in 2025, who knows how good of a pitcher he's going to be? It's the second Tommy John surgery. So I was hesitant, ladies and gentlemen. I was that guy. I was the one like, I don't know. I don't know if it's a great idea. But obviously... I'm not going to complain about having Otani in our team. Fool. Of course, I'm going to be excited also. But I'm also like, it'll be a, a bit of a realist. Like, compa, 500 million? 600 million? For a guy who's only going to, for like basically a JD Martinez with a with more power? Yes. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I cut on 70 million fool, for a designated hitter in 2024. Ta, I get he brings so much more to the table, right? But. The whole point is that he's 70 million because he's a two-way player, dog, which he's not going to be a two-way player this year. But anyways, I was like, man, fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. No way. But then when the announcement came this weekend that he signed with the Dodgers, I was like, yeah, Otani, we got him. Oh, me, love you long time. Oh, for sure. At least for 10 years, dog. Oh, it's happening, dog. That's my boy. Uh, <laughs> I know it's a little... This joke's not very good. But anyways, the point is I'm very happy to have him in Dodger Blue. It's going to be amazing. 10 years, $700 million, compa. I th- look, fool, it does like slap you in the face as a sports fan. But then you realize, it's not my money, fool. Not my money. How, how is this going to affect my le- everyday life? Yeah, possibly in the stadium. Possibly in the stadium. But I don't go. I, I, that means I'm going to go to less games, fool. I'm just going to go to less games. And when I go, I'm going to be prepared for that shit, dog. And I'm going to tell the kids, hey, wait. Dodger dogs are 20 bucks now. Wait, no, my man, let's share one, fool. Right? Let's share one. Let's eat at the house before we go to the game. Whatever you got to do. Whatever you got to do. Right? And uh, and more, just watch them on TV more, dog. What the heck? Fucking shit. You know? You don't have to go. You go to three games a year, two games a year, you're good. You're good, bro. You're good. Now, I usually go to like 12, 12 or 15 years of games a year, but that's only because I got the plug. I was only going to get the plug. Now, if I didn't have the plug, I'm not going to go more than twice a year, compa. I'm not. I'm not. So let, let, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not. So I, I, so that doesn't really affect me. Like $700 million how, how, doesn't affect me, bro. It's not my money, fool. 
We got Otani. That's all I care. That's all I care about. One day there will be a one billion dollar player. One day, not too far in the future for what's coming. So get ready for that. I got to cut on this. All right, it's all good. It is what it is. All right, I gotta go. Fool, I, I really gotta go. I got shit to do, man. Man, I got a full plate of shit. Uh, guys, uh, shows coming up. I, I did mention Palm Springs. It's actually a private show, guys. I'm performing this Friday in Palm Springs for uh, beaches. Uh, an Indian reservation. Ugh. That should be interesting. Yeah, so it's, I was wondering why there was no flyer or anything. And they're like, oh, no, it's a private show. Fool, it's a uh, Christmas party. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So, anyways, I'll be in Palm Springs this weekend. Do my thing out there. Uh, and then, obviously, Montebello, Friday, December 22nd. is sold out. Saturday, there's still tickets. Very few, though. Limited tickets. I believe we're, like, at 500 tickets sold. The place only holds 700, bro. So, we are very limited on Saturday, December 23rd. Laughing all the way. Concrete, Rene Vaca, Ken Flores, yours truly, Doc. It's going to go down. Montebello, Quiet Canyon, this uh, two weekends from now, fool. All right? So, I got him in. Happy birthday to my son, Diego Garcia. Mañana, martes. 12 de diciembre y a la virgencita también, güey, of course, compa. All right. Y'all have a good weekend, dog. Y'all have a great one. Hit me up. Send me more questions. I got a few more, dog, that I've got here saved that we're going to touch on later. Thank you for everybody. Welcome to a late show. Hey, Otani, dog. Love y'all, motherfuckers. Have a good one. I'm out.